Welcome everybody. I'm Mark David, founder of the Institute for the Psychology of Eating. We're in the Psychology of Eating podcast and I'm with Natalia today. Welcome, Natalia. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> Hi, glad we're here. Glad we're doing this. So if anybody listening in is new to the podcast, how it works is Natalia and I are meeting for the first time and we get to do a session together. And the idea is for, you know, to see if we can help move you forward and do some good work together. So if you could wave your magic wand and get whatever you wanted with food and body, what would that be for you? Okay. So if I had a magic wand, I would uh, have no attraction to sugar and flour whatsoever. I would not be attracted to sugar <laughs> and I would be about 35 pounds lighter. Okay. And 35 pounds lighter. When was the last time you were 35 pounds lighter? Many years ago when, when, I, was 90, when I was 19. How old are you now? 46. Okay. Have you lost that weight at any point? Not all of it. Like I lost, I gained, you know, it's been up and down, but I, yeah, since then I have not been at that weight. Mm -hmm. So what would be, what do you think is a doable amount of weight for you to lose that you think is, 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 is really possible within your reach? Well, within my reach, maybe um, like go down to 140, probably. Yeah, that's probably within my reach. So because how many I've pounds? Been there. So that would be from today's weight, about 18 pounds. Okay. So how long would you say you've been actively trying to lose weight? All my life. Since when? How young? Since when I remember myself, but it wasn't like, it started not with me. It started with my parents, of course, at that age. Mm -hmm. um, and it was really funny because it was uh, very double-sided. Like my mom cooked food and she expressed her love by cooking and feeding us. But at the same time, she would, at some point she would say, you've had enough, stop eating. Like, there's a story going around. I don't remember my, apparently when I was two, we were having dinner and I was asking for more. I was told no. And then about, you know, when everybody went to bed, they found me in the darkness. I put a chair to the stove and I was grabbing food from the pot. I don't know. I, I mean, why would they tell this story if it wasn't true? So I assume that happened, but so yeah, it started early. Mm -hmm. And what do you imagine would be different when you are at a good weight, when you're at your ideal weight or close to it? How do you, what do you tell yourself? My life is going to be different in, in what kind of way? So um, it would be different how I feel and how I look. So I would feel light. I always wanted to feel like a squirrel. You know, squirrels are so light. They jump from mm -hmm. branch to branch. And yeah, the way I look like the clothes would fit nicer. Like there was the point when all, like going shopping was pleasure. Now I don't like going shopping for clothes at all. I hate it. <laughs> because? Because things don't fit. Even if I take, like, it just doesn't fit. Stuff doesn't fit. Unless I get something baggy and then I don't like it. It's, you know, jeans shopping, for example. <laughs> Mm -hmm. love okay. handles falling out and stuff like that yeah it's just... are you in a relationship yeah how long we've been together 15 years i think this this yeah this year will be 15 years congrats how does your Thank how does you. your partner feel about your body um i think he doesn't mind he doesn't complain <laughs> i mean but um there was a point where we, when we both were kind of trying to lose weight. He's he's actively trying to lose weight. I am kind of not dieting. I quit dieting years ago because I just figured it doesn't work for me. But he's still doing that. So, but you know, he never complains about my body. Mm -hmm. So, 
if you lose weight, you're going to, so the benefits are you're going to feel lighter and you're going to fit into the kinds of clothes that you want to fit into. Yeah. Which really means you're going to, you're going to, you're going to be able to wear skinnier clothes. Yes. Because there's all kinds of clothes for all kinds of people. Yes, I guess. So when you say nothing fits, we can probably find an infinite number of outfits that fit you. I guess we probably can. I just, uh, maybe I didn't spend enough time looking. It's just, I get tired and uh, like, okay, what I like doesn't want to fit. (laughs) Yes, understood. Clothes you want to wear don't fit you. Yeah. Okay. So how does sugar and flour that you mentioned, when I asked if you could wave your magic wand, you said you wouldn't be attracted to sugar and flour. Um, How does that impact you? Well, I ate too much of it. Let's say like during this Christmas, I gained probably five to six pounds because of this amount of chocolate. Um, Mm -hmm. It's like has this pull on me. Like when I stay away, I did quit sugar for six months, some years ago. It was good. Mind you, I didn't lose any weight (laughs) because I didn't quit flour at the same time. And it was kind of nice, but then we went for vacation and there was ice cream and then there was my daughter's birthday and everything. It it seems like if I have a little, I want more and I'm having hard times of just having a little. There are days when I can have chocolate in the house and have one square. And there are days when I will eat the whole chocolate bar. But this is, I guess, stress uh, eating. I understand that, but I still haven't figured out how to not stress it. Mm -hmm. So the amount of chocolate and flour that you eat these days, do you, does that make you gain weight? Are you still gaining weight or is your, is your weight holding? Well, it's holding like Christmas. I gained weight because of chocolate, but now I'm holding it, but you know, I want to go down at least Mm -hmm. to something so yeah I'm pretty good at holding the weight Mm -hmm. I am not as great of losing the weight okay so previously you've tried to lose weight by dieting I tried dieting that actually made me more stressed so I gained weight so that's why I quit dieting I tried what worked to once somewhat is I tried juice juicing Mm -hmm. and that worked first a couple times and then when I did a long-term juice I did lose some weight it didn't happen like first times it's like my body decided no we're not playing this game anymore it just started stopped to warm me up I started to just get really cold to to my bones and there's no way to get warm just on juice so I stopped that too because what's the point to go in into this trouble if you're not going to lose weight anyway and be cold like really really cold (laughs) so how old are you now again 46 46 so it's an interesting age relative to weight and what you want your weight to be. Have you ever thought to yourself, you know, what if I just held with the body that I have right now? Can I be happy? Did you ever go there? Yeah, yeah. And what I realized is yes, happiness and weight is not exactly the same thing. Um, and I probably could learn to be content with that. And there is this and like, and I still want to be a little bit thin. Okay, maybe not, you know, 126 pounds, maybe 135 pounds or even 140. But Mm -hmm. it's just like this, this, I can't convince myself quite yet. Like, okay, I'll just let it be. You're Mm -hmm. what you are. And uh, like, there is this underlying, no, I still want it. (laughs) So do you tend to be a fast eater, moderate eater, slow eater? I am trying to learn to be slower. I'm fast eater. Um, 
my family is fast. It's like a competition. So I don't know why we eat fast. And we, we are aware of it. And, and we still, every time we eat, like, let's eat slower. And then everybody just inhales their food. It's kind of funny. Um, so yeah, I'm fast eater. Okay. And are there times during the day or the week where you could say to yourself, this is the time I tend to eat too much? Um, I certainly eat more in the afternoon. In the morning, I'm fine. But in the afternoon, I want to eat. Like what time? After two, I would say. Do you have lunch? It depends. Yes, I, I, I will have some, I will have lunch, I don't know, 12 or one. I don't really have regimen. It depends on the day. Um, yeah, and then depends how busy I am. If I'm busy, I will not eat. But if if there is something going on, if I'm avoiding a task or a phone call, then it's like kitchen is like a distraction. <laughs> um, yeah, or if there's something stressful going on. So either avoidance or stress, then it will be eating. Mm -hmm. Even if you've had lunch. Even if I had lunch, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what do you tend to eat when you're avoiding or feeling stressful? Oh, yeah, like a toast mm -hmm. <laughs> with butter. I try, I try to eat fruit, but then eventually something will depend. Like if there's chocolate, I'll be like, oh, I'll just have one, I promise. And sometimes it happens, I'll just have one. But sometimes it's like once you have one, then the whole box can go. Mm -hmm. um, depends on the day again got it and how about in the evening times yeah the later the more food i want to eat so meaning what time so we try to yeah we try to have dinner at about five um and i've been much better actually at it um at just like okay we've had dinner let's just close the kitchen it's done <laughs> um on bad days, like after everybody will go to bed, it's like, okay, I'm by myself. I can have a little bit of chocolate. Um, on a good day, I'll just have a tea and read a book and it's fine. But on a not good day, you'll have chocolate. What else? If there's no chocolate, I'll have some honey or some dates or something sweet. It's the sweet stuff. Is it a lot? Like if you have dates, how many dates would you eat? Three, four, mm -hmm. like this big Mitchell dates. Yeah, mm -hmm. like. uh, yeah. And would you consider that, do you think to yourself, oh, I shouldn't have eat that, that's fattening? Um, well, like I, I, in my mind, I'm like, okay, if, just have one because they're big and they're sweet. The pleasure doesn't really... What I figured, the real pleasure is from the first day. The rest is just stuffing myself. Like the fourth one doesn't taste as good as the first bite. You know, mm -hmm. it's almost like chasing the first bite, but you never get it again. <laughs> it's a great way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> so how many kids do you have? One. Daughter. Yes. How old? She's eight. Mm -hmm. how would you like her to be in relationship with her body i want her to be confident in her body i want her not to stuff with food uh, yeah i want her to love herself um as she is uh, but that's the thing i know enough with me it's I'm trying to substitute emotional regulation with food and I'm trying to learn how to be better, but I'm still somewhere. It's mm -hmm. my journey for sure. Yes. So when I said, how, how do you want your daughter's relationship with food to be? You want her to be, you said you want her to be confident in her body. You also said, you don't want her to stuff herself with food. That was the message you were given when you were young, right? Don't stuff yourself. Don't mm -hmm. eat too much. Mm -hmm. 
See, it's interesting because confident in one's body It's a fascinating term because oftentimes confidence in one's body doesn't depend on what one weighs or how specifically or particular one looks. Meaning I've met plenty of people who are confident in their body and they're big bodied men and women. They that might be the true. kind of men and women who people consider fat or chubby or a big girl. I've met plenty of big women who are beyond confident in their body. What happens is we often have the belief that I will feel confident in my body when it looks like this or that. And usually it looks like this or that means it's thinner. It has less weight. Likewise, I don't know about you. I've met plenty of people who had the classic slender body and they're not confident in their body. In fact, I meet them all the time. They're not confident in their body because they're afraid they're gonna gain weight because they're constantly worried about food. They're constantly worried about body fat. And they're, they're literally, they aren't confident in their body, which means they don't trust their body. They're not fully in their body because they're in their head about their body. That's true. That's so I, I'm just, I bring up your daughter because a lot of times it's, it's helpful for your own relationship with food to look at the wisdom that you want to impart to your own children. Because the wisdom you want to impart to your own children, to your own child, to your own daughter comes from a deeper place you have a deeper knowing. We're often better at helping others than helping ourselves. We're often better at seeing what somebody else is gonna need and how to give that to them than how we do that for us. That's just the way human beings work. That's why, I like, you know, that's why God made other people and it's not just you here or me here and that's it, nobody else. We kind of need each other. So you want your daughter to be confident. Confidence is a frame of mind. Confidence does not depend on the size or the shape or the weight of the body. You can stigmatize somebody about any aspect of their looks. I, I was speaking with somebody today who was saying to me, you know, it, it's my partner said to me, you're looking too thin. And all of a sudden it put her in a state of being unconfident and not feeling good about herself. So it's just interesting how confidence is born. It comes from an inner place. It comes from, I think, getting to know our body and enjoy our body. What I would, see, here's the thing. If you're not gonna diet, which I think is great, meaning not be in diet mentality, Diet mentality is all about training the body how not to eat. I'm going on a diet. Here's how I don't eat. Here's how I control my food. Here's how I control my appetite. Here's how I limit the food on my plate. It's all about control, limitation. And essentially, you're trying to give your body the signal, don't eat, don't eat, don't eat. Meanwhile, your body is designed to eat. <laughs> Your body is made to be an eater, so your body needs to eat. Not only that, your body is designed to receive pleasure from eating. You say to me, I wish I wasn't attracted to sweet. Well, we need to remove all the sweet taste buds from your tongue and remove all the sweet taste bud receptors in your brain. Uh, can't do that, it's impossible. So the way we're designed, we're designed to literally find pleasure in sweet things. That's how we're made. Um, so confidence, I think, comes from, confidence with our body comes from being in our body. What makes us feel good about being in our body is doing the things in your body that make you feel good about having a body. 
You might feel confident when you're dancing. You might feel confident when you put on clothes that you like. You might feel confident, I don't know, when you're like going out on a date with your husband on the town. You might feel confident when you dance. You might feel confident doing a certain sport. You might, whatever it is, it's an inner state. It's a choice and it's something we learn the more we do things in our body that make us feel good. Do you literally know someone in your life who has a woman who's a bigger bodied woman and she's confident in her body? I know I do some, why not somebody, anybody come into mind? How about somebody you've seen on TV? Somebody who's a, 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 a singer, yeah. an actress, do you know any singers or actress who have big bodies and they just strut it? Yeah. That's what I'm but, talking about. But yeah, I mean, and the, the singers and actresses always try to lose weight. It's just like they're uh, obsessed with that too. Um, uh, you it's know, a lot, of them, a lot of them are, and a lot of them aren't. Yeah. There's a whole group of human beings since forever who are not walking around trying to lose weight. All I'm yeah. saying is I, I, I think it's fine for you to want to lose weight. Don't lose weight to be more confident. Lose weight because that's your preference. I prefer to have less weight on my body. Why? Because be, don't even give a reason. I like colorful things in my home. Why? I don't know. That's what I like. I like to wear a lot of black these days. I, I can't give you a reason, but that's my preference. That's my choice. I prefer when my body has a little more muscle, my preference. So you can have a preference, but you can still be confident in your body. Yeah, yeah. You can have the preference to have a body that weighs less and you can still be lighter. What do I mean by that? I don't know. Think of anybody that you know who's thin and depressed. They're heavy. Yeah. When we're down, when we're depressed, when we don't like our life, when we don't have anything much to live for, we are heavy. We feel heavy. So you can weigh very little and be quote unquote heavy. Right. Yeah. So I'm 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 just wanting to point out to you places where if you're not going to diet, which I'm glad you're not, again, not going to be in dieting consciousness, how do you do things that move you towards a natural, towards your natural weight? You might be at your natural weight right now. I don't know. But what I do know is that we have the best chance to reach our natural weight as we become our most natural self. As you become the best version of you, the body has the best chance to become the best version of it. Mm -hmm. That's just what I've noticed. It's the mind-body connection. You can't separate the two. One follows the other. You become the best version of you, body has the best chance, the best chance to become the best version of it. So I'm interested in you becoming more the best version of you. So I'm looking for the little, little places to work that might make a shift in your weight. Because if you're waiting to be more confident in your body, if that's going to be dependent on weight loss, then... Mm, I don't think that's true. Yeah, you'll feel good about yourself when you lose weight, I'm sure. Or I hope, but I'm going to tell you a lot of people don't. 
I meet people all the time. One of the most common things I hear is, I thought everything was going to change when I lost weight and I lost the weight and I was so upset because I was still me. And I still had my problems and I still had my issues and I still had this and that and the other thing. So weight loss doesn't necessarily guarantee us anything. It's who you are inside that's determining your experience of your body. So I'm saying, sure, have the preference to lose weight, but don't wait for weight loss to be more confident in your body. Figure out clothes that don't have you shaming yourself. No, I can't wear that. That's no good for me. Figure out clothes that women do this all the time. Men do this all the time. You figure out clothes that accentuate what works for you so you can feel more confident. And then you actually go about your business and practice, literally practice the feeling of confidence. Like and that. by the way, you'll be demonstrating the very thing you want your daughter to have, which is confidence. Because you know what? Like a lot of people, she's going to probably in the course of her life gain weight and lose it and gain it and lose it. She'll be more active. She'll lose weight. Maybe sometime in her life, she'll be more passive. She'll be sitting around a bunch or she'll go through a difficult time. She might gain a few pounds. And then she'll get on some cool diet and start to exercise and she'll lose some weight. <laughs> and what you want that whole time is not for her to reach a certain weight. You want her to feel good about herself. No matter what. Yeah. No matter where she's at on her journey, you wish her happiness. Absolutely. So let's wish that for you. <laughs> yeah, good point. Let's wish that for you, that no matter where you're at on your journey, you can be happier and confident. And your happiness and confidence is de decoupled from weight loss. I will not be happy. I will not be confident. I will not feel good. I will not feel lighter until I lose weight. So therefore, until I lose weight, I'm not going to be happy. I'm not going to be confident. I'm not going to feel good about myself. Ouch. So it's changing your mind. This is, this is the psychology of weight loss. You start to create the results that you want in the end, oh, I'm going to lose weight. And these are the results. I'm going to feel lighter. I'm going to feel more confident. I'm going to love myself more. I'm going to fit into my into clothes. Great. Start to create those end results in the beginning. I'm going to feel good about myself now. I'm going to expand my horizons when it comes to clothes and go let me pick out clothes. In this, in this body that's going to make me feel good. And you find that. Don't protest. No, 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 no. A closing shopping is going to be miserable until I lose weight. <laughs> you don't want your daughter to wait to live her life when she has, you know, a different body. You want her to live her life now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's funny, yeah, I never I knew about the happiness piece, but I didn't even connect the confidence piece. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. I like that. I like start from the end. Start from the end. Everything you expect as a result of weight loss, say to yourself, how can I create that right now? Because then you can't lose. If you lose the weight, you'll have been practicing being confident and happy and self-secure. So by the time you lose the weight, you'll feel really good. And if you don't lose the weight or if you don't lose all the weight, you're still happier and you're still more confident. Yeah. It, it's also... 
Natalia, I, I, I think it's also deciding that there's almost a part of you that's like a 15 year old girl inside you who wants that kind of body that's just going to, you know, it's making you feel good about yourself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's fine. It's fine. But if she's dominating, if that 15 year old girl is dominating the internal conversation, if she's running the show for a 46 year old, that's not going to work. Yeah, good point. So I think there's a part of you that needs to, in a strange way, let go of the young woman dream. The young woman dream, the young, the, the princess archetype dream is I'm going to be beautiful and fabulous and everybody's going to love me because I'm beautiful and fabulous and everything's going to be great. And I win because I'm beautiful and fabulous and I look like this and I weigh like this and I live happily ever after. And it's a beautiful fantasy for a young mind. It's not a good fantasy for a woman who's 35 and up. It doesn't track who you are as a woman. Because the truth is we get older, the truth is the body changes. The truth is it's harder to lose weight as you get older, it just is. I don't care what anybody says, it's harder. Sure, it's doable. And the truth is we get little wrinkles and things. And if we haven't found happiness and confidence and a sense of self-security, then we will be very unhappy as the body continues to shift and age. Yeah, you've been on on this. I am having hard times with aging. Yeah. So a piece of the weight loss for you is defeating aging, going back in time and being that young person. In a way. And I just want to tell you, as your older brother, I'm older than you. I'm 64. So I've been what? dealing. Yeah, I'm 64. So I've been dealing with aging. And we have to embrace it. Yeah, I understand it with, you know, I understand it consciously. And there's a part of me that doesn't want to accept that part. Of course. I don't want to accept it either. I'm with you. <laughs> we're, we're in this together. And nobody wants to, it, 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 there's, there, there's nothing fun about aging necessarily. It's not fun. There's um, an old line from um, the American writer, Mark Twain. He said, it's a shame that youth has to be wasted on the young. <laughs> yeah. It's like now is the point in your life where you can really appreciate youth. And it would be ideal to have your youth now. Because <laughs> back when you're really young, you take it for granted. You know, you think you're immortal. Yeah. So it's a, it's a spiritual act to embrace aging. I don't know how else to put it. It's, um, it's, a, it's a growing in, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a deepening of our soul. It's a deepening of our wisdom. It's an acceptance of the circle of life. It's kind of looking ahead into the future and saying, okay, I'm going to the same place that everybody else in human history has gone, which is I'm going to die. So why waste a single moment wishing you were younger because five years from now, you're going to wish you were this age. <laughs> you're going to wish you had everything you had now. 
<laughs> and 20 years from now, same thing. You're going to wish you had what you had now. Yeah, that's true. So right now is a part of you wishing you had what you had back then. And that's the pattern. I'm raising my hand and saying, let's interrupt that pattern. Because otherwise, we're never enough. And we're always looking to the past. And we're never in the present. And we're never appreciating what we have. And we're never actually occupying the body that I have right now. You will never be as young as you are right now. So what's the tool technique? Mm. Good question. What is the tool and the technique? I think it's a practice. And I think the practice is contemplating, having in mind every day that every day counts, every day matters, because we don't know how much longer we're going to be here. You don't know how much longer you're going to have the health you have right now the body you have right now, how can I celebrate and enjoy my life today? How can I celebrate and enjoy this body today and not make my happiness contingent upon changing it to look something different sometime way in the future that might not even happen? It's every day practicing, how do I how do I live this day to the fullest? Which means being grateful. When I'm wanting to change my body because I don't like it, by definition, I'm not grateful for what I have. I'm not grateful for this body because it needs to be younger, stronger, have more muscle, have less fat. So I'm not living in gratitude, I'm living in lack. And living in lack is living in lack, it's not fun. So I'm always trying to do something to feel better, that doesn't really make me feel better. And usually when we're trying to control the food on our plate so we can weigh less, eventually that becomes too stressful and we do the one thing that we know really distresses us, which is eat. <laughs> the very thing we're trying not to do. So part of it is making peace that you're an eater. Like I'm an eater. So is everybody else. I'm designed to be an eater. That's how we're all created. That's how we're all made. And I'm, And you're doing your best to be in relationship with being an eater. And yeah, you're, you're, we're all learning. I know a lot about nutrition and eating psychology and I'm still learning about my relationship with food because we change, we get older, different things come up. So I think the learning never stops. And you're learning how to find peace with food and find peace with aging. So make every day count. Yeah. What's going on, Natalia? How are you feeling? What's what's coming up for you? I like this. I like um, you're right about find peace with aging. I I think I thought I found peace with food to a certain degree, certain extent. So I need to practice. But what is 
a good perspective is to live in gratitude what I have today instead of living in lack. That's, I think, the missing piece for me. Yes. Yeah. And it's embracing the queen stage of your life. You're not in the princess stage anymore. You're in the queen stage. In the, in the princess stage or the youthful stage, we tend to need approval from the outside. Am I okay? Do you love me? Do you, do you accept me? Am I good enough? That's what young people need. Young people need to know I'm okay. You all like me. You all love me. You all approve of me. One way that the world, the culture, and I'm not saying this is good, but one way the world approves of its girls is it says, you're pretty, you're cute, you're sweet, you're thin. We approve of you. We like you now. Good girl. And we hear that and we obey. We hear that and we listen. And we hear that and we think, I need to be that. When we, when we reach the wisdom stage, the king or the queen stage for you, then you realize that whatever the world told you, whatever society told you, doesn't matter anymore. It's your beliefs that matter. We've been conditioned in a certain way to believe certain things. So really what we're talking about here is deconditioning, is letting go of beliefs that don't work anymore. So in the queen stage of life, a queen sits on her throne and she owns her body. A good queen knows who she is. A good queen doesn't ask her queendom, am I okay? Is this dress okay? Can you see my body fat? Do you think I should lose weight? Will you still listen to me if I don't lose? No. A queen just commands the room out of wisdom and love and respect. She respects herself and she respects all the people around her. She's not looking to get something so she can be approved of. She's actually just giving her gifts to the world. When we're trying to lose weight to have approval, we're looking to get something from the world. If we're trying to lose weight to have approval, so then the world approves of me. I'm trying to get something from the world. And this is a time in life where the energy is, is what you have to offer, what you have to give, because that's what's going to make you feel abundant. Giving makes us feel abundant. Sharing your talents, your words, your skills, your love, that makes you feel abundant. Giving the best of you to the people you love, that makes you feel abundant. Yeah, I like Whenever, this. Yeah, go. Yeah, it just, um, I like this stage as yeah, the princess, the queen. You're totally right about this. I, I kind of, part of me got stuck in the princess hood and I signed to move, move, move on. Yes, yes. It's truly time to move on. Let the princess be your, your eight-year-old girl because that's her stage yeah. and let you be the queen and the queen loves herself and approves approves of herself no matter what you gain a pound you approve of yourself you lose a pound you approve of yourself your love is not conditional if you were saying to you i'm only going to love myself if i lose five pounds ten pounds twenty pounds Sure. You bet your daughter's going to pick up on that. That love is conditional on my weight. Kids, children are very brilliant observers. They pick up on things. Yeah. Yeah, they do. 
So one of the greatest gifts you can give her is to love your own body as it is. You can have your preference. Your preference is fine. Your preference is respectable. But your self-love and self-respect isn't dependent on getting your preference weight. So um, how do I, again, yeah, the importance of it, it's uh, shifting the importance of the weight and yeah, not having the approval attached to weight a love attached to weight, self-love. And that's, um, what is it? That's a mind exercise, <laughs> essentially. Yes, it's just first you're aware of it now and it's catching yourself. Just catch yourself in the moments where, you know, maybe you'll look in the mirror and you'll say, ah, I don't like what I see. And you catch yourself and you turn that around. You, you, you literally replace that thought with, actually, I love what I see. I can see a part of like, of me, like, I love part of the, all of me, what I see. No, you don't, you know, this self-talk. Yeah. For sure, yes, yes. That other voice will exist and you don't need to fight that other voice. You just need to, help that other voice get lower and lower by letting other voices get higher and higher. Mm. So it's not about fighting that voice. Yeah, okay, there's that voice in me. There's that I voice just that just wants to happen. Yeah, just like, there it is. Hello. Goodbye for now. I'm not entertaining you today. So it'll always be there but it's just a question of to what volume and how much. So at some point it'll be, it'll show up and it'll disappear in a second because you don't give it attention because you enjoying your life and being grateful for what you have will be far more important than, but you have to look different in order to be happy. Mm -hmm. Your life as it is, is far bigger than that small voice telling you, you need to be losing weight. Yeah. So that's the practice. It's catching yourself and replacing affirmation. Affirmation of kindness, of self-love. I'm choosing to love and accept my body no matter what. I choose to love and accept my body, even though it's not the perfect weight that I'd like it to be. Yeah, it's funny. I was just, I just picked it up again. I love and, if my, I love and accept myself, even though, that's the phrase I really like lately, even though, whatever it is, I'm not the perfect yes. weight. I love and accept myself, even though I had a fight with somebody, I love and accept myself. Yes. Kind of that lends to me. I can't do plain affirmations like I love my body. Sure. Like, but this even though helps me like, oh yeah, even though I love myself. Yes. Because it's true. There are all the people you love. None of them are perfect. Nobody's perfect. Your husband's not perfect. He does things you don't like. You still love him even though he does things I don't always like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why not to extend that to myself too? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I like that. Feels good. I think we did some good work, Natalia. I think we did. Thank you, Mark. It's There's lots to think about. There's lots to think about and there's lots to 
practice. Yes, definitely. I appreciate you being such a such a willing participant and conversationalist and being very generous with your time and 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 sharing your inner world. And I've really enjoyed it. And I'm sure a lot of people will benefit from this conversation. So thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for your wisdom and thank you for your time. And yeah, that's been very, very good. Thanks. Thanks, Natalia. And thanks everybody for tuning in. Take care, my friends. Hey friends, we're so happy that you've joined us for another episode of The Psychology of Eating with Mark David. Are you loving these episodes? Then simply subscribe and you'll never miss an episode again. We'd also love it if you'd leave us a comment below so we can hear more about your own journey with food and body. And if you're curious about what we offer at the Institute for the Psychology of Eating, including our internationally acclaimed coach certification training that's rooted in dynamic eating psychology and mind-body nutrition, please head on over to our website, psychologyofeating.com. Until next time, take care. And remember, having the body you want starts with loving the body you have.